Welcome to Holy Family. Welcome to Holy Family Episcopal Church in Fishers, Indiana, the online worship. Our bulletin can be found at holyfamilyfishers.org, and you can also see all the announcements for the week. There are very many Lenten programs going on, almost all of them online, but we have our weekly walk on Saturday morning in person, and you are very welcome to be part of all of those. Our worship comes from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. See 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Surai, your wife, you shall not call her Surai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Please join in praying the portion of Psalm 22 appointed for today. Praise the Lord, O you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them, but when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that God has done. A reading from the book of Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. 
Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written, not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Jesus said this all quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, And if, if any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in, gl in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning's Gospel has the almost infamous words of take up their cross and follow me. I say infamous because it's probably one of the most damaging sentences out of the mouth of Jesus because it's been so misused usually by people who are more than happy to set a very heavy cross on somebody else instead of picking it up and taking it themselves. So in an attempt to negate all of the negative images that you may have heard through the years about this passage, I want to offer a different image to it. And if you've never heard any negative ones, God bless you, and hopefully this will reinforce your positive connotations with it. But what if, what if the cross that Jesus asks us to bear is that we are beloved by God? What well, if it's that simple and yet that life-changing? Because it's very difficult to be loved. Those of us who are grown up enough to have been in love a number of times may know how hard it is to accept love. Those of us who have been following God long enough can know how easy it is to forget we are loved by God. And that's why I think what Jesus is talking about here is taking on the discipline, the challenge, and the confrontive reality of bearing the love that God has for every individual in the world and really all of creation. Because it is a bit of a burden to take that out into the world. We are given a different task than the rest of the world gets when they get to determine for themselves what and who they are going to love. For someone who 
takes on the cross of being a beloved child of God, we are confronted with the challenge of loving everything because that's how God loves. That's the cross we are carrying each day of our lives. The challenge to see the world in that way. The challenge to live our lives in that way. The challenge to interact with all we encounter through the perspective, the lens, the behaviors of love. I don't think any of us could pull that off. Well, I can think of a couple people that come really close. And that's why it's a cross to bear. Because it's not easy. It's not something that I would ask anyone to do lightly. And I don't think Jesus is asking his followers to do this lightly. I think Jesus is letting them in on how hard this path is going to be because they don't get to choose their own ways. They don't get to choose who they are going to value more than others. They don't get to choose what the top priorities for the church should be. Instead, they take up the cross of love and simply have to trust in God as they take each step with it. Now, when Jesus carried the physical cross, that was a cross of love. That was Jesus bearing on his back the cross that showed all the world for all of history how much God loves us. That God is willing to give up life itself for us. Surely, one of the deepest, if not the deepest, expression of love a human can make for another, that's what Jesus did. That's the example we are called to follow. Not the, necessarily the part about suffering, which often is how this passage is interpreted, but rather the part about loving the world so much, it's changed. Because when Jesus died on the cross and then was resurrected, the whole meaning of life changed. We no longer were limited to a handful of years of existence. Instead, eternal life became part of our reality. Instead, eternal love became part of our reality. So whenever someone tries to tell you that the way of the cross, the way of Lent, the way of God is one of suffering, cross that off your mental whiteboard and instead scrawl out there in big letters, L-O-V-E. Because the way of the cross, bearing the cross, walking in the way of the cross, is a path, a journey, a way of love. A love that transforms us as the cross bearer, a love that transforms the world through whoever and whatever we encounter. And that is the cross that Jesus hands us. The cross that, if we allow to be, is very light. But we should not take it, we should not agree to it, without knowing what we're getting into at least a little bit. And that is having the power and the responsibility to change the world for the better. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please join me in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that, that we all may, all may be, be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that, that your name be glorified by all people. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of St. James Newcastle. We pray for the agencies of the Episcopal Fund for Human Need, that, that they may be faithful, faithful members of your word and sacraments. sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that, that there may be justice and peace on earth. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the Graves, Gray, and Grayson families, and for those who serve as our adult forum leaders. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray for those expecting babies soon, especially Ann and Max. We pray in thanksgiving for our church community, even when we are physically separated, we are one body in prayer. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Especially remembering those on our prayer list, Kevin, Glenn, Dia, Bill, Matt, Mary, Paul, Kara, Aaron, Charlie, Phil, Lynette, Mara and family, have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that, that they, they may, may be delivered from, from their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Patrick Rooney. Let, Let light, light perpetual, perpetual shine, shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, may we, we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to work with one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And also with you. God's peace be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. And also, and with, also, also with, with, you. with you. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving, wherever you may be. Let us pray. God, our Father, whose Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in a wonderful sacrament, has left us a memorial of his passion. Grant us so to venerate the sacred mysteries of his body and blood that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruit of his redemption, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A special blessing for Lent. Keep Holy Family Parish, O Lord, with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, it may be upheld by your divine protection. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Um. Ben, are you ready? <laughs> I wonder if you can hear the little claws on the ground. I guess we'll Probably see. Probably not. Okay. <clears throat> Wait for it. Okay. <laughs> They're running around crazy. Okay. Those are our children, by the way. <laughs> Not the cats. The little ones. Those are our kids. As well as to see all the announcements for the week. We have many... Cut. Welcome to Holy Family Episcopal Churches. <laughs> I said hope. I said hope really bad. I was Hoops. super hoing. Hey. You know you know what hoing is? Wang. <laughs> I don't want to be any wang. <laughs> All right, well, let's start it over then. Or do you just want to? Height do? and length combined. <laughs> Wang. <Length. Length. laughs> Oh, Bert. Lancelot. <laughs> We've made that joke before. No. <laughs> Lancelot. Oh. I'm ready. Father. Mother. Father. Uh, mother. See. Father. Uh, mm. <laughs> From your son. Oh. Okay, ready? Homage. You're disgusting. <laughs> I'm not old. I'm 37. <laughs> We get all our stuff like <laughs> copyrighted for the weirdest <laughs> thing. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Getting her notes. Looking at all the people mute themselves and then wondering how they were going to quickly <laughs> unmute themselves. This is good for outtakes. <laughs> we'll just give all of this to Ben. You yeah. Just look out, guys. I'm just telling you, look out. <laughs> I don't understand why I married you sometimes. <laughs> Remember me when you come into your king.